Hi. Hi. Caitlin, uh, Greg Doyle, Indy Star. Real quick, oh, let me do this. You like, you like that? I like that you're here. I like yeah, that you're here. I do that at my family after every game, so. Okay, it's well, let's cool. start doing it to me and we'll be able to get along just fine. You just were given the keys to that. What are you going to do with it? What am I going to do with them? Hopefully, we're going to uh, win a lot of games to start. She's going to help us out um, with that. Okay, you just heard that was Caitlin Clark's opening presser for the fever. And while I'm sure it was a joyous occasion, what a lot of people are talking about, Callie Lawson Freeman, are these uh, exchanges uh, that Greg Doyle had with Caitlin Clark. And they were awkward, they were cringy, they were inappropriate. I don't know what Greg Doyle was thinking. And just so everyone's clear, because you could not see the gesture that he made to her, it was like a heart, you know? Uh, I'll let you guys determine who are, who are watching whether it's appropriate for a media member to be even doing that in that setting, okay? Because I want to be clear that there are different types of media members, uh, but he is attending a press conference and he is asking questions. And in that type of setting... Uh, was that appropriate? The answer is no, but, <laughs> you know, but it was also, you know, what, what would happen if I went to one of the Golden State NBA pressers, as I often do, and I said, hey, hey, Wardell, hey, Steph Curry, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, um, what, like, what would be said of me as a woman uh, covering the game and saying that to a male athlete, as it is, as it is, I've asked questions to Steph Curry before, and people have said I was trying to seduce him with the way that, like, my voice sounded. Yeah, they were in the comments, like, who is this woman? I'm like, listen, don't have Aisha out here coming for me. Like, I'm just, this is my regular speaking voice, you know? So... Yeah. We as women just hear all kinds of things about the way we pose questions, frame them, the things that we do. So for this man to ask to, to start by, you know, doing heart signs at Caitlin Clark, again, this is what he did to her. OK. And and, you know, you like that, like just all the talk, the the subtones, it just it, it was just so you know, she asked him, you like it. She wasn't saying anything about it, but it was his response. Like, you do that to me. And, you know, it's just like, come on, what are you doing, dude? Right. I think, you know what? You said something that I thought was great is what was he thinking? Okay. And I can tell you exactly what he was thinking. He was thinking, I am a well-respected columnist who has never, ever, ever, you can look through his work, had to cover the Indiana fever, even though I work for the Indianapolis star and I write about football and I write about basketball up until this point, he was thinking that the fever, the WNBA was below him. Right. So then he entered this press conference with an inflated sense of self-importance because, whoa, look, I'm a man and I'm, 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 I'm going beneath myself to cover this applaud me, right? Like I should be the star of this. I should have the, you know, I should make people laugh. Like I have this personality and you might think that I'm, I'm pulling this out of nowhere. I unfortunately read his column, which was titled Caitlin Clark. I'm so sorry. On Wednesday, I was part of the problem in that column. He writes that he is sort of known locally for having awkward conversations with people before asking brashly conversational questions. Those are his words verbatim that I just read off the screen. And that, if if that doesn't show exactly like what was going through his mind, this is like, this is who I am. This is about me. And people should be excited that I'm here covering her. Like they should, right? That's That's the mindset. And so his comment when she was like, she tried to pivot. I don't know if that was in the sound that played previously, but she goes, I'm just happy to be here. And then he goes, I'm happy you're here in like this long drawl as if it matters. Why does it matter that he's happy that she's there? Like his opinion is not the end all be all as a journalist. It's not your job to tell players how you feel 
about them. That is literally not your job. And so that is what was going through his mind. And I think you can read and his apology. there was apology. also the second part. There was the second part right. of the conversation as well. Right, and where he completely objectifies Caitlin, literally objectifies her, saying, you have now have the keys to this. What are you going to do with it? It. Which is absurd. And like, I know I'm going to get so much like blowback for what I'm saying because people are going to say that I'm being like overly sensitive but I can tell you this Caitlin was offended and so was her family and I say that because Greg Doyle wrote it in his column that he offended Caitlin and her family and so he wouldn't write that if he didn't get that feedback from somewhere right it's not like we could tell him that Caitlin was offended and her family was offended. No, someone told him that and he had to apologize. And the apology was probably one of the most like self-centered things I've ever read. But I read it so that I could be prepared for this conversation today. And so I know a lot of people are gonna say like, oh, it's just a heart gesture. Why are you guys making such a big deal? It would be as if like we mentioned Steph Curry, Steph does like a handshake with his daughter a lot of times right. before games. It would be like if I went up to Steph Curry and tried to do that handshake with him, that is so inappropriate. It's not my place to do. And so that's really what it comes down to. That's why people were upset. And there's a much larger issue here, which is that there are a lot of white men disproportionately covering sports where black women and black men are represented. There are, you, there are studies to show the amount of black women covering sports it's abysmal. It's just so bad. Like it's such a small amount of people, even just women in general covering sports. I mean, the industry itself is shrinking. Right. And so that's the reality. It's, it's really sad. And the WNBA locker rooms are closed because of things like this, which is something that also limits the types of stories that we're able to tell. But when you see stuff like this, how can you be mad? How can you be mad that the locker rooms are closed? Right. I mean, there, there's a few things here, right? Listen, people who are going to uh, now venture into covering the the league, women's basketball as a whole, you need to approach this seriously. You need to do the research. You need to get the history. You need to understand the dynamics and the things at play because there's just been so many ridiculous things said by men and women. And it's always clear who has familiarity with this sport. The reactions to Diana Taurasi and the comments she made, expecting her to say anything different um, is ridiculous if you know her, but it's also sexist. And again, I want to always say this, that women can also be people who carry on misogyny, right? It's not just men. That's not what that means, right? And so the idea that it should be all flowers and roses and uh, Caitlin and don't, like, these are competitors at the highest of levels, right? You would not expect men to do this. So don't expect women to do it, right? It's not necessary. And so- Like, look, this is going to be an interesting time with media coverage in general, because you had the L.A. Times, you know, that piece that happened with with uh, you. Right. And men who are writing and for some reason find it so hard to write about women, like just write about them the way you would write about male athletes. It's not that difficult. It's not that hard to do. Right. And so. I think, Callie, years ago, you know, so I was having this conversation with someone and we were saying that it's very unlikely that something like this would have even come out or been a big deal years ago, right? Like no one would have noticed this would have happened and it wouldn't even be like a news story, but there's so much attention. There's so many eyes on women's basketball right now that we can start to have accountability and it's not, it's everywhere. And like, if you don't think that what we do on X Twitter works, it does. Because I remember Naismith when they, they, they tweeted the, the defensive player of the year candidates, you know, for college and Camilla Cardozo right after that fight, that happened in the SCC final game was the only player 
not smiling. Every other player's picture had them smiling. And it would be one thing if Camilla was a very serious person, never smiled, but Camilla Cardoso is always smiling. So why did you, the day after that game, choose to put out a tweet like that where every other player is smiling but her? But future iterations of the, that tweet had Camilla smiling every day. Don't tell me they did not see the replies because they received a ratio like no other, right? And so we have to continue to use our voices to call out when ridiculous interactions like this happen with Greg Doyle. And he's apologizing probably because like you said, Caitlin and her family felt disrespected. It got so much attention and also because he was obviously spoken to. But- you never know when it comes to things like this. Are you really sorry? Do you even understand what you did wrong? It sounds like by the column he penned that he doesn't. But unfortunately, we're going to see much more types of coverage and strange interactions like this. And so if anyone ever, I just want to um, say this last thing and then Callie, if you have another word, but if anyone ever questions, because the, the women's basketball is very unique in the type of people that have been covering it because for so long, the mainstream did not want to cover it. So you have, uh, people like Aria Chambers who just, you know, um, who is like the face or one of the faces of women's bas women's sports coverage in general, right? And so, you know, a lot of people in the media haven't always respected her, right? You have Christina Williams, right? You have other people like um, Sabria Walk um, Whitaker, I'm sorry. Uh, you have so many people out there and people like this, the committee, which is, you know, a, a, a group of really, really strong women's basketball fans on Twitter, but they, they have influence. Dawn Staley, flew two members of the committee to South Carolina's opening game in Paris, okay? These are people who have been with women's hoops for years, okay? And they post a lot of uh, TikToks and other kinds of social videos that allow you to just know these players in a personal way, see their personalities, things that traditional media doesn't really always do, but yet there's this conflict and there's this judgment around people who cover the sport like that. But I want people to understand there is a reason why those players want to be around those people and want to talk to them. And there's a reason in general why players want to talk to a person who looks like them. The same reason why women may go to an OBGYN who is a woman or just have woman doctors or the same way that people like to go to doctors who look like them. There is a reason because a lot of time those people relate to you in a way that someone just cannot. And again, I am not saying that people who are non-Black should not cover these sports. But what I am saying is we need more people who look like them to cover it. And we need the people who do not look like them to take the time to understand their culture, the unique situations of these people, and cover them properly. Okay? So... When women cover men's sports, the amount of detail and research and things that we have to do to make sure we are X's, O's, everything, because, you know, if we do not cross, you know, all of our T's and dot all of our I's, they are going to come for us. Treat women's basketball, treat all women's sports with the same respect that we give when we come over to talk about men's sports and in general that all of these athletes deserve. Period. Period. Is that the last <laughs> word? <laughs> All right. That is the last word. <laughs>